This is CNN Breaking News. We begin with the breaking news, uh, though, that we're following. Just coming in, chilling new images just released of the Boston bombing suspect, Jahar Sarnayev, covered in blood as he was being arrested by police. You know, as Brian Todd has the behind-the-scenes photo for us. Uh, Brian, what is going on here? Why are these photos now being released? Well, if these photos are jarring, first we have to say this. Incredible photos released by a sergeant with the Massachusetts State Police named Sean Murphy. Murphy. He is a tactical photographer. He was infuriated by the release of the Rolling Stone cover, by the picture of Jahar Sarnayev on the Rolling Stone cover. He felt it was disrespectful and an insult to law enforcement. So he, on his own, has released these pictures to Boston Magazine, and he's given uh, at least a short interview and some quotes to Boston Magazine to accompany these pictures. Uh, here's, you see them right here. These are images never seen before of the capture of Jahar Sarnayev from uh, that, that boat that was in uh, the backyard of that house in Watertown, Massachusetts on April 19th, the night none of us will really ever forget. These are some pictures, again, never seen before of Jahar Sarnayev's capture. Sergeant Murphy said that he wanted people to see this as the face of terrorism and not that Rolling Stone cover. Uh, a couple of quotes from him that he felt that this was insulting. Quote, I hope that people who see these images will know that this was real. It was as real as it gets. And he believes this is the better image of terrorism than that Rolling Stone cover, Wolf. Again, let's look at these pictures again. You see in this one in particular, the laser scope paint of uh, basically the targeting of Jahar Sarnayev on his head. They've got the laser scope from their rifles on his head as he emerges from that boat. Very, very dramatic. You see him pulling his shirt up when they asked him to, you know, they, they asked him to do that to make sure he had no weapons on him. So he does that with the laser scopes on his head. There's a picture of him climbing out of the boat. You see him swinging his leg over the boat right there. There is another picture of him with a laser scope on it. Uh, that's a picture of them attending to, I believe, one of his feet uh, after his capture. Again, very dramatic photos. And there's the, there's the one we were just referencing. Just as he's emerging, you see the scope right on his forehead. They were trained on him in case anything happened. And uh, just incredibly dramatic, Wolf. Very, uh, and both of us were in Boston at the time, nights and days. Yes. And neither one of us will ever forget, and a lot of other people as well. Brian, thanks very much. Uh, the editor of Boston Magazine, John Wolfson, is joining us on the phone right now. Uh, so give us the backstory. What happened here? Was it strictly the result of that cover of Jahar Sarnayev on Rolling Stone that prompted this police officer to release these photos to you? Uh, yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, he's been sitting on them, obviously, since uh, April, and uh, I don't think he ever felt compelled to release them at all before, uh, and I think he felt, I think he was genuinely worried about the uh, impact on the families of the victims, and I think he was also worried that uh, certain impressionable people might be lured to uh, replicate the act uh, by the kind of glamorous looking photo uh, that is on the Rolling Stone cover. The, the, the quote that, that's in the, uh, your story uh, from this police officer, what Rolling Stone did was wrong. This guy is evil. This is the real Boston bomber, not someone fluffed and buffed for the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, when you got these photos, what did the, you know, the police department in Boston, the other police officers say to you about releasing all these pictures? Well, uh, this happened so fast that no one has, frankly, had a chance uh, to say anything. We're in sort of uncharted waters here, and uh, uh, Sergeant Murphy, I think, is, is as aware of that as anyone. Um, th this is a measure of how deeply he feels uh, that uh, I think he felt conflicted on some level about releasing these photos, but I also think he felt like it was something he, frankly, had to do. And that red dot on his face, that, that's the, the, that, 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 that shows where the, uh, the snipers were targeting him potentially, right? That's exactly right. And, and it, it, these other pictures are pretty amazing as well. Uh, are these all of the pictures that the sergeant has, or are there more in the works? No, we have hundreds, and uh, our plan at this point is to run a more traditional sort of magazine-style photo essay uh, in our September issue, and there'll be a lot more to see uh, of these photos. Uh, they're very, very dramatic, and also a lot, and this is, I think this is important to say that I think uh, Sergeant Murphy also really wanted to, the focus uh, in terms of the heroism here to be on the, on the, uh, on the law enforcement officers, and we have a, there's a lot of really dramatic photos of what they were up to as well. And what do they show, basically? Just give us a, a little summary. 
Well, you see some samples of it, but I think you see a lot of sort of the deliberations going on in the in the war rooms. You see some of the uh, equipment that was used. There's a lot that we didn't know about uh, because no one was allowed to see any of this, including how they had to sort of forcibly ram cars out of the way in order to kind of create a crime scene or a, pen, a, a, perim, a perimeter, excuse me, there in Watertown. Uh, and you really, I think, kind of see the way uh, these events were weighing on, on the folks whose job it was to sort of find this guy. Very different pictures of uh, Jahar Sarnayev than the picture that, that was on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. And I understand why a lot of these people, and especially in the police, are upset about that. Brian, Todd is still with us. You wanted to make a point? Yes, Wolf, and just to, just to reiterate to what you and John were talking about, my team and I were only about 100 yards away from this scene when these pictures were being taken, when all this was unfolding. I can just give you some of the quotes from the police interaction with him at these very moments when he's about to come out and when he's coming out. Just before all these events unfolded, we heard the police say, quote, come out on your own terms. We know you're in there. Come out with your hands up. Uh, one of them said, you will not be harmed. But clearly they were ready for anything, as you can see from the, the training of these laser scopes. One of them said, we know you're bleeding, we know you're tired. Those were some of the words from the police officers that accompany these pictures at those very moments. I want to get some legal analysis of what's going on as well. Let's bring in our, our legal analyst, Jeffrey Tubin and Sonny Hostin. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, what do you make of this latest development, these uh, pretty brutal, gruesome, graphic pictures of Jahar Sarnayev? Well, well, if there's only one issue in the Sarnayev case is whether he's going to spend life in prison or he's going to get the death penalty. And I think this whole controversy over the Rolling Stone cover, which these photographs you know, fl flow out of, just show how raw the emotions are about this and how if this case goes to a uh, jury in the Boston area, you know, Sarnayev is in a great deal of trouble. So it all suggests to me that his lawyers are going to try to delay, delay, delay as much as possible because anything going on now uh, would not be to his advantage. You think uh, that a plea deal, uh, Sonny, potentially could be in the works whereby he would plead guilty, get life in prison without the possibility of parole, but avoid uh, potentially a federal death sentence? You know, I, I think that's possible, Wolf. It's always a possibility when you're looking at a case like this. Um, I, I think before that decision will be made, though, there's no question that the government, uh, the prosecutors, will speak to the families here, will we'll speak to those that are affected and, and, and make that determination in conjunction with them. Although, of course, it is the prosecutor's decision whether or not to seek the death penalty, whether or not to offer a plea, I suspect that that will be a decision made with the input of the families. All right, guys, stand by. John Wilson, are you still with us for a second? I'm here. Uh, how angry are the folks in Boston over that Rolling Stone magazine cover? Well, they're this angry. Uh, yesterday, I, I, I wrote a, uh, a fairly softly worded, I thought, uh, uh, I wouldn't call it a defense in any way, but it's sort of an understanding of the cover. And I, that saying that I thought that some of the outrage was... Uh, was perhaps out of proportion to what had happened, and uh, I heard from a lot of people who did not agree, let's put it that way. And uh, it's very raw. Uh, I think that uh, I, 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 I don't have a sense of when it's frankly going to, things are going to begin to heal. I will say that Sergeant Murphy felt strongly that the families had just begun this process of healing, had just begun to sort of regain their privacy, and I think he felt that this cover double victimized, uh, doubly victimized them by dragging it out again at this worst possible time, just as things were starting to heal. I suspect if Rolling Stone had uh, an opportunity to do a do-over, they would have used the picture on the right on their cover if they wanted to put Jahar Sarnayev on the cover, uh, as opposed to the picture on the left part of the screen on the cover, but uh, we'll never know for sure. On that. All right, uh, uh, John Wolfson, of, uh, the editor of Boston Magazine. Thanks very much, uh, Sonny and Jeffrey. They're sticking around. We got more to talk about, as is Brian Todd. Still ahead.